everybody, and welcome to the Liars Club. I'm Felicia Michaels. And I'm Michael Evans. You were supposed to say Jessica and Wellington. And I'm Jessica <laughs> Wellington. <laughs> welcome to the Liars Club. What we do here at the Liars Club is we have two of our comedy pals come on. We ask them to tell two stories. One is the truth and one is, one is a lie. And then we will uh, ask questions. Don't get nervous when we kind of ask questions about the story just to understand. Also to punch a hole in the story uh, to, to kind of figure out which one is the lie. And, uh, and for you guys playing along with us on YouTube, uh, you can ask questions too. Austin, our on-air producer producer uh will relay those and uh, and then we're gonna just have a great time so let's start it would you please introduce our guest austin you know what i would love to uh to my right is sean Patton, host of the five words podcast on all things comedy he's representing the good old usa performing at edinburgh french fest and he's co-headlining this very belly room this wednesday with steve renazisi mm. it's mr sean Patton. Nice. thank you that, that is a welcome beautiful to the mm-hmm. show, Sean. I want all, I want all intros <laughs> done from now on by a man with a Floridian accent. You call me and we can work out a price. That sounds on that. nice. From a gator. Gators yeah. give good, good props. And thank you for having me, Felicia. <laughs> You're very welcome. And congratulations on getting into Edinburgh. That's always on uh, almost all co- comedians' bucket list is to do the Edinburgh Festival. Congratulations Everyone on should that. do it. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yeah, Everyone should do it. Yeah. You can just do it. Yeah. You just go live in Scotland for a month and walk among cobblestone streets and drink whiskey out of tiny glasses and then you're like it's not whiskey it's scotch and you have that debate <laughs> there you go and then people are like harry potter and you're like no don't say that but then everyone there's like yes harry potter so it's very <laughs> it's a fun place and scott and also you spend a lot of time deciphering what people are saying it's beautiful wonderful wonderful <clears throat> will you introduce our second guest felicia you know me as a full-blown florida gator i think it's That's right. uh, no surprise and across from me is nathan hurd another florida gator from jacksonville florida you know him from american horror story very menacing on there he burned a witch alive much mm. like probably many of my ancestors have done mm-hmm. he got it. and he also played the monk very i think villainous character who i got to witness personally because i worked background on those same episodes of Legion, and he's the host of the Back by Sunset uh, podcast with Zane Helberg. It's Mr. Nathan Hurd. Welcome to the show. Yay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Go Gators. Okay, there you <laughs> go. go. So uh, Michael is guest hosting for Jessica today because Jessica is uh, coming home, probably driving right now uh, driving. from Northern California. She's been on the road, and we're happy that she's uh, doing a shit ton of work, and uh, <clears throat> congratulations to her. You were also on the road with her earlier. It's a good time. It was a good time. That's what I heard. So let's just jump into the game. Like I said, if you're playing along, please leave any replies on the YouTube page, and we'll uh, Austin will read them. And why don't we start with Nathan? All right. Uh, you just want me to tell one of the stories? You tell one of the stories. Don't tell us which one it is, and we're going to rotate it around. Okay. Uh, so uh, when I was 21 or 22, we used to I, – we lived in, I lived in Washington State, mm-hmm. and they have, like, you know, people drink in the woods. So we would go out to the woods a lot and get, <laughs> get fucking hammered and have a bonfire and do all that fun stuff. And uh, I remember one night we were drinking out in the woods, and I was drinking vodka, and I – Vodka's just too easy to drink, so I was just like slamming the fifth, you know, going in on it, and uh, had to take shit. So I, you know, <laughs> <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> there it is. I had to, I had to take a dump. So I, uh, I go away from the camp because I wanted to make sure that I was far enough away that if another drunk person saw me squatting, they wouldn't come like push me over, do some fuck shit like that, and. Uh, so I found a stream, and as I'm walking to the stream, there I, I, I see <coughs> that the fire got bigger, uh-huh. and I turn around, and the fire's obviously gotten bigger, and everybody's laughing. So I assume that somebody just like threw alcohol on the fire or threw like something on a, like a, a tent or something. The fire got fucking bigger. Anyway, right. I finally get to the stream, and I kind of go down the embankment, and as I'm, as I'm like trying to level myself over the stream that I've found to Duke, they... I see you like... <laughs> oh, you're going to go right into the street. I'm just going to go right into the street. It's not a like, bad move. Yeah, you know what I mean? Really? Like, sure. I mean, really? I was worried about... He said far enough away to where nobody would see him and maybe push him over. I was yeah. concerned about... I mean, like, like human shit out of water. Yeah, dude. Floating. I was thinking, like, even if you're not 100 yards away minimum, it's gonna you're going to catch some... Yeah, I feel... I, well, I, you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm always like... I, I feel like a bear. You know what I mean? Like, might come looking for that dude. But if I... You know, if I just put, I put it in the... <laughs> yeah, dude, put it in the water and let it float down. <laughs> <laughs> got to hide your scent right you know? right right so uh I, i'm about to go <laughs> and i see 
at the, where the campfire is that lights are like it looks like Christmas tree lights, uh-huh. like a bunch of different colors. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then I hear, OK, guys, line up. And I'm like, oh, fuck, that's that's the cops. Uh-huh. Like they must have saw the big ass fireball. Yeah. And and now I'm like, well, I'm frightened because I'm in the woods. I know there's cops, but I still have to shit and I'm about to shit. So I'm like, well, fuck it. I'm just going to shit. They don't know I'm here. I pull down my pants and I squat over the, the stream and I start to, to shit. But I hear, hey, you in the woods, uh-huh. come come out right now. I'm like, these motherfuckers told them that I was in the woods. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, they, they're like, then I hear, uh, come out or we're going to release the dog. Whoa. And I'm like, please don't fucking release the dog. And I'm, I'm, I'm shitting. But I'm like, now I'm power duking. Like, I'm trying to push <laughs> as much out as possible. Power as duking. Fa- yeah, do it as fast yeah. as possible. Because I'm fucking yeah. shitting in the woods and I, they have a dog. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know what's going to happen. So now, was that dude, what, that, that's how you relocated to Florida, right? Was it power duking? Power duking. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, you know, what it, it was seventh grade. It was, <laughs> it was the day I, I didn't know I was lactose intolerant. And I found out I was a kid that carried a thermos anyway, power duped all over myself. <laughs> and it was just a terrible afternoon. My mom took me out of that school and we moved to Washington. So <laughs> now I'm in Washington doing the same thing I did in Florida, power duking. And I'm, I'm like, fuck. So I hear the, the cops coming towards me. Did you think of going, I'm shitting over here. I'm just taking Shit, I, I was. I was like, I'm shitting. I'm, 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 I'm duking. That's why they're like, come out, or we're gonna release the dog. And I'm like, please, Jesus Christ, do not fucking release the dog. I can't. I'm sh- in the middle of shitting, and I'm, I'm like, I'm panicked because I don't know what. what and it, your body just didn't cut off. Your body was just didn't. It like was, your colon it was, just was a nope. It was, that up. it was one of those dukes that it's not all <laughs> like, like it's not all diarrhea, but like <laughs> you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like yeah, one yeah, of, yeah. like it's a, like a half and half. Like yeah, there's a, soup. yeah, like the stream yeah. of water oh, and no. then a chunk and then a stream of water like, and then like, a chunk. Yeah. I like to call that the combo. Yeah. That's the yeah. that's yeah. number three. <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, that's, three. that's like yeah. the number five or six. Just getting everything in one, and it sounds like a machine gun. So I'm I'm. I'm powering. I'm almost. I'm done. And I see the cops coming through the forest, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm shitting. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done." And I'm pulling up my. I pull to pull up my pants, and I just freeze. And the cops like come out because he's on the embankment, and I'm a little like two feet down under the embankment. How he, far were you from the water? I was over the water, like I was shitting in the water. That's why I went down the embankment. Uh-huh. I was over the water, shitting in the water. Like foot so, on each side, narrow stream. No, no, eh, no, no, no. Like the stream was like. Here and I'm shitting with my butt hanging over the edge wow. of the Now head. afterwards did you splash water up and clean yourself? Well, see here's the problem. Um I just pulled my pants up because like I said, power duke, I didn't you know I Right. I wasn't trying to look for things to wipe. I just wanted to get my pants up around the dog. You know By the what way, I mean? you've broken the record for saying Power Duke the most times on a podcast yeah, here yeah. at the Comedy Store. Well, he's sponsored by Bo- Power Duke Powder. Hey, yeah. Look, if Charmin would like to me to sponsor them, I have no problems with yeah. that. Okay. But uh, so I, when I pulled my pants up, I realized that I had not had my ass far enough away Ooh. from my pants. And oh I had my. just yeah, And I had just shit yeah. in my pants. <laughs> like, oh my god! You had a, like, a castaway. Like, oh, yeah. is that what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> you have to cast That's those pants away. If it were, uh, you can flush your underwear down the toilet. Let's just say I've coming from a place of experience <laughs> when I say that. You can flush them down the uh, underwear. Will go down the toilet pretty cl- qu- pretty easy. I don't know about whole pants though. Oh yeah. Also, was, you were in the woods. I was in the woods, and like, <laughs> it, and the problem was like when I pulled them up, I just. It was, I, cause I pulled them up, and all the crap just like went all over. Oh, it's yeah, cold, yeah, cold crap. It was oh, cold, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> and the realization of what had just happened was like, I've never done this before. I have no reference on what I'm supposed to do now. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Because the cops looking at me, he has a dog. The dog is barking, and I'm two feet down in an embankment. He's like, "Come up here," and I was like, "I shit all over myself." And he was like, "What?" And I was like, "I shit." in my pants and then pull my pants up what should i do and he's like well i'm you still come like he's like I don't, <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a personal problem you need to still come with me so i get up and i'm walking back and i'm fucking just miserable and i'm walking back and and we get back to the thing and everybody's lined up near the cop car and he's checking everybody id every everybody's over 21 so it's cool and he's like look we we stopped because we saw a fucking fireball 
and we wanted to make sure that you guys were all of age and you know to keep the fire to a minimum and and everybody's like cool 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 so we're gonna let you go with a warning and by the way this guy shit in his pants pulled his pants oh, up thanks. he is covered in shit now just to let you guys know have a great night and fucking just left and so i had to all of my clothes were shitty and for the rest of the night, they were just making so many shit. I guess an albino does shit in the woods. You know, just the fucking, <laughs> <laughs> the jokes that were being thrown at me were ridiculous. And, and I spent the rest yeah. of it, like, completely naked. And I just had a towel. I just put a towel around me, and that was how I went. Someone home. happened to have a towel out in the well, woods? Well, we had a towel. We were camping. Oh, you were camping. Yeah, we were camping. Oh, but, I didn't realize you were camping. Yeah, we were camping in the woods, but we uh -huh. didn't bring, like, we were just going to drink and then get up in the morning and go back home. Oh, I thought it was just a kegger where everyone was leaving. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. We were camping out, so Can I didn't Can I ask bring. you a question since you brought it up? You said that you're in a body, no? Yeah. And, that, that, and you said earlier you had poor vision. Yeah. So how 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 did you walk down the embankment? Well, I have, actually, albinos actually have, uh, all albinos are legally blind, but uh -huh. um, they also have pretty good night vision. Wow. Yeah, wow. We're, we're wow. Like we're allergic That's to cool. the we're allergic to the sun. Right. You know, we're allergic, it, our our eyes kind of work like night vision goggles like it's Nature robbed you of the darkness, but you can see in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. That's the trade-off right there. That's the trade -off. That was so official the way you said yeah. it. <laughs> hey, wait, what was the plan had the uh, had the cops not shown? What were you going to were you going to grab some some foliage? I was just going to grab some <laughs> fucking foliage, dude. Yeah. I didn't I was just gonna, you know, grab some leaves and, you know, when you're 21 and fucking drunk, dude, you don't care. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. I actually grew up in Washington State. Everything about this bonfire setting, this drinking yeah. in the woods, yeah. totally, this all, this all checks out. That's a fucking uh, great yeah. album title, by the way. Grabbing foliage. <laughs> Grabbing foliage. Yeah. 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 That would be uh, a phenomenal album cover. Man, it would have been way better if they'd just come and pushed you over like you worried about rather than I the was cops just showing. like all I. It would no. Well, I just was so glad he didn't release the dog. Do you think that it was the cops showing up that freaked you out? You hurried, maybe you aimed wrong. Yeah. You didn't know where you were at. Do you it, think you would have shit in your pants had they not scared you? No, it was the dog. It yeah. was the it was that fact that they threatened with the dog yeah. before I saw it. You know what I mean? Like, cause, I don't know. Here's, here's my I don't only know about my only this catch. story. <laughs> the <laughs> scent of the dog. The scent of the albino poop might have thrown off the dog. Yeah, though. Perhaps we don't yeah. know what that smells like. We don't and, even know what color. And it is. And the cops didn't even make the wish because isn't that the thing? If you catch an albino poop in the woods, you make a wish. You, you, gotta, a wish. you, gotta, you gotta rub his belly. <laughs> right, right. They didn't even wish. do any of that. Yeah, that's how I grew a beard. <laughs> to be fair, they weren't like they weren't like cop yeah. cops. They were rangers. Exactly. But they didn't, okay, then that that makes my next question more important. I think. So the range. I'm sorry, Michael. So now they're first they're cops and now they're rangers and well, rangers have a dog rangers have walk same... around with dogs with cop dogs wasn't asking questions i've because yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah. I've been this kid i've been this i've been uh -huh. this kid in the wood, woods in yeah. washington state when the cops show up they never just brought the dogs straight yeah. up just right yeah. away I mean, we're not making a judgment about your story mm. now, but I'm very mm. suspect over I, your I mean, story. I mean, I gotta say, I've, I've also been the kid, excuse me, camping in the woods, and I can say on multiple occasions, they just send the dogs out first. Like, yeah, you I've, I've, catch, I've been that. You just hear the barking and you see the animal before mm. you before they, they, the flashlights yeah. come usually, after you. Usually, usually, well, because I've been chased by the cop dog before, and usually what happens Ooh, is- Oh, that sucks. Yeah, they, <laughs> what they say, well, they say, we're releasing the dog, and then they just release the dog. Luckily, when I was running from the cops at the point when I was being chased by the dog, I stopped and the other guy didn't. And so the dog mm. went right past me and mm. fucking ch kept taking, chasing him. Well, that I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you were no. a degenerate. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying because I grew up in Colorado and we used to do keggers and go camping and all that. And so even if you're kind of drunk, if you know you have a massive, you know, something up on deck, you're going to take some something to wipe your butt with especially if it's dark especially if your vision all that great i don't my dad was legally blind i'll give you the uh, albino can see better in the dark thing i'll give you that but i i find this story very suspect i'm not making a judgment on that if anybody has any here's questions the thing, here's the thing when how old were you again like 21 22 when you're when yeah, it's still still too young to admit that you poop so i when you when I didn't I didn't tell you oh, just had to escape just yeah, get yeah, out yeah, like, you know what I mean like I wasn't anyone. I wasn't telling people hey guys I'm gonna go poop in the woods yeah I'll be back in a second please don't come push me you know what I mean like 
That's no, the, I know, that was the biggest fear going into this. I think you would have searched for something to wipe your bum with, though. After drink, I was drunk. I, it wasn't like, it, we, I drank, I used to drink a lot. I used to start out my nights drinking at the bar uh-huh. with two double shots of 151 apiece lit on fire. Jesus like, that's how I Christ, you sure... The albino re- is why you're legally blind? The <laughs> <laughs> sure shirt's not all that fucking 151 you used to start your night with? Yeah, yeah, dude, I was, Jesus. yeah. I, I was getting, I didn't know, I hated drinking, but I was good at it, and I didn't realize how much I was drinking until I realized that the people that I was drinking with were alcoholics. Yeah. <laughs> I, I drinking with fucking tugboat captains. I was yeah. drinking with a guy. I was, captains. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking with a guy named Bobby, and he eventually was drinking so much, he was diabetic, and he ended up losing his feet, still wouldn't wow. stop drinking. Jesus. Oh. That was Bobby. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like, Everyone's yeah. got a drunk Bobby. Everybody's got a drunk Wait, Bobby. Wait, Felicia, yeah. Felicia, what part of Colorado did you grow up in? I grew up in uh, outside Colorado Springs. Oh, good. Yeah. They got some good butt wipe and foliage out there. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Do we have any questions? Oh, we have some questions. Yeah. Here, we all right, let's Here go. it goes. So, um, first of all, Melody Martinez wanted to welcome the welfare version of Bill Burr, but I don't know which one. Which who one? In yeah, this that room could be like literally. Bill Burr. So, uh, welcome which, to all of that's us. That's ridiculous. I, guess. I don't know what you're <laughs> talking about. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> Yeah. Why welfare? What's wrong with that? <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome to Leah and to uh, Jessica, who's playing oh, from nice, the road. Nice, so uh, nice. glad cool, to have cool. her. And she said that when it hits, it hits. And when you got to go, you got to go. So Ambushed. she could definitely buy that. But she said that Nathan should never be alone in the woods by himself <laughs> because that's how every scary movie starts. Yeah. <laughs> Which I've never seen a scary movie that started with an albino in, in the woods. But To be maybe. fair, yeah. I was with a large amount of white people. Yeah, the universe <laughs> still knows he's black. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, yeah. Universe still the universe black. still knew which one to separate from that group. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. Even in Washington. Even yeah. in Washington. Even, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Mama Shar said, uh, ew, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, Ken Lofgren's chiming in asking what state, and everybody reminded him it was in Washington. And Washington. Also, Ken Lofgren, you guys met Ken Lofgren. Yeah, he's in Washington yes. right now. This yeah. is actually in Olympia, Washington at uh, Evergreen, uh, Evergreen Forest. And where okay. were they? Where was he? In, uh, he's in Tacoma. Tacoma. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I don't know, what, like I don't know my away. Washington geography, but. Like a half wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, we're going to move on, but I'm very suspect over that story. Yeah. But uh, but good first story. It got, yeah. the, got the juices going. And Poopies. and you, young man, what's your first story? Oh, let's go. Oh, it was me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, similar <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? We were, well, um, I, 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 I grew up in uh, a suburb of New Orleans called Slidell, Louisiana. Oh, I which used to live there. You did? Yeah. You used to live in fucking Slidell, yeah, Louisiana? Yeah, I lived in Abita Springs and Slidell and Laplace. Wow. Wow. Mm. Well, are we related? We could be. We might be related. We might be related. Um, Slidell's like the, um, like the Staten Island of New Orleans. <laughs> Like it, it's just it's you know it's not so much white <laughs> trash, but it, it but then there's some white recyclables. That's what I like to call them. <laughs> so that's where I grew up. Um, we would a friend of mine owned his parents owned a cabin in Purvis, Mississippi, which is roughly I don't know an hour and a half north. And we would go there from time to time as a group of friends just to get wax dog shit faced in the cabin. We weren't out in the woods. Um, if any of us had to shit, there were meant there were three okay. toilets in the place. So, but. You know, we we go out there once. Uh, this was in 1999. We go. There's like ten of us. We have a bunch of weed. We stop at the one. There's one grocery store uh, in Purvis, Mississippi, at the time, 20 years ago, where it was like a 7-Eleven slash Walmart slash automotive dealership with a like diner and bar connected, just like one establishment, right? <clears throat> we drop everybody back off at the house because that's Purvis, you know. <laughs> um, and then me and my buddy, we go to buy the beer because we're the two who are 21, right? And we buy a bunch of hams. Do you know that beer? Yeah. Hams in a can, right? Which at the time was $5 for a case cold or $2 for a warm case. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Right, right. So we just So you a, buy one of each and no, that. No, no, we, no we, just, we, we were saving fantastic. money. We just bought a shitload of $2 cases of warm hams and some ice. And we load it in the back of his like Jeep Cherokee. And as we're driving away, we, we're driving down the street, we get stuck. And it was like, it had rained. It was that shitty Mississippi, just mud puddle nonsense. We get stuck in that. Like on your way out of the driveway? It, basically, like, a uh, good way to describe this. You have to cross, we had to cross a main road onto a smaller road, which was kind of not that far from where the camp was, but definitely just a smaller, shittier oh, road. See. Right, right. So we get stuck in the mud, and we're like, ah, oh, fuck, and we're getting out, and he's peeling out, and I'm... Trying to die. I don't. We're both. We're both. Neither one of us are very rustic people. Mm-hmm. But then we see like three fucking guys outside of the bar hollering like, "Hey, wait, what up? 
bah, bah, like kind of from where they are, it's inaudible. But it's like, dude, what's your thing? Whoa, get him out there now. <laughs> now, fuck that. Woo. And then one of them gets in and hauls ass over in his fucking big ass F-150 with the winch. Because someone's stuck in the mud. Got to show this fucking winch fucker off, man. Right. And you can tell the moment he pulls up and sees it's like two 21-year-old dudes. So disappointed that it wasn't the two women of his dreams <laughs> that he clearly had fantasized about pulling out of the mud and having a threesome with. Anyway, so he's, you know, all right, you know, <laughs> yeah. up whatever you need to believe. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> back, back, exactly. I think he was happy with 21 year olds, no matter who they yeah. were. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. Plus, hey, anyone, man. With, anyone with a winch is, ex- is just yeah. looking for an opportunity that's to sure. use it. Very the same, true. same way Very as like true. a buff guy fair is enough. looking for any shirt off occasion yeah. he yes, can have. Fair like, enough. Someone's stuck. I got I got to use it. You want me to lift something? Yeah. <laughs> you want me to lift something in the upward direction <laughs> over my shoulders? I got that. Got that yeah. new 45 there you know yeah yeah <laughs> wouldn't be that skeptical for a pervert to live in purvis mississippi probably yeah, yeah. Well, there you go, and i guess for a pervert if you put on the pervert logic it's like man 21 if it's young enough it don't matter to gen the genitalia yeah. right. you know and but anyway he fucking hooks us up and he's pulling us out and he's like what you know he's asking us some questions and basically i'm a dumbass we had a camera with us not in the we it was back at the cabin our plan was we were going to document the night. The movie, the Blair Witch Project, had just come out. <laughs> okay. Right, <laughs> so we were going to make. We were the whole reason we were going up to the camp was to get shit faced and make the Purvis Witch Project on just a stupid fucking HD cam. Right, not not HD. Um, what were those? Super Eight or no, no, no like the little mini V. Not the VHS. Mini SD. VH, VHSC. Oh, Remember okay. those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. shout Remember out those that. Mini SD. Yeah. Or maybe that was it. Thing. But we had that. So the guy's like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> you know, he's he's asking us where we're staying. And my friend describes the tr- the, the the camp. He's like, oh, yeah, the tree frog. And we were like, what? He's like, that's what that man, the guy who lived there, I guess, before your your parents brought it. He called that place the tree frog. Died in there, man. It's crazy. You know, we're like, oh, shit, okay. And he's like, what are y'all doing here? And I'm, like I said, a dumbass. So I'm like, oh, we're filmmakers. Right, <laughs> and he's like <laughs> filmmakers. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're just gonna we're doing we're gonna we're there to you know we're gonna we're writing a movie right now. And my friends is looking at me like, what the fuck are you saying? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just the moment struck me. I'm like, yeah, we're just we're gonna we're gonna write a movie, and you know we want to shoot it here in Purvis. It's just beautiful country. He's like, okay, filmmakers. That's fucking crazy. I ain't never met a filmmaker. Well, nice to meet you. Y'all are out. Bye. You know, unhicks the winch. We go back. The partying proceeds. We're drinking half warm fucking cases of Schlitz. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Ham. hams. We're smoking weed. We're just getting wasted. Now, it was a camp that was on stilts. You know what I'm saying? So the camp, but underneath the camp was like a 10 foot just under. Mm, I know what you're talking right, about. Right, right. Yeah. Like the patio, basically. There was a hammock down there. There was a ping pong table. We're just fucking around being kids, right? And then suddenly, four sets of headlights. <laughs> Oh, right, because you told them this, this guy where you're going to be. Well, yeah, four sets of headlights come just kind of like, so I'm trying to paint the picture perfectly, but there's like a little hedge, but where they pull up, you can see the headlights blaring through right into where we are, this area underneath the camp, and we're all just like, what the fuck is that? What? Oh, shit, shit, and it, it's been a few hours now. It's been maybe four or five hours. It's midnight, one in the morning-ish, where it's like, <laughs> all right, this is, what is this, what is this? And then you just hear like, all these doors opening and shutting and a lot of scurrying and a lot of unidentified shackling, slamming, opening. It's real like, oh, what the fuck is that? Four headlights or four sets? Four sets of headlights. So four cars. Four automobiles. That's a lot of rigs to pull up. So then, we and we're making enough noise to they, they, whoever's back there clearly knows we're down there. And they can also see us. We're fucking illuminated by the headlights through this hedge. And we hear one guy goes, Hey, filmmakers! <laughs> and everyone's like, what the fuck? And my friend, like, points at me, and I'm just like, yeah! And he goes, fire up them cameras! And then a second later, a wall of raccoons. It's the best way to describe it. A what? wall what? of raccoons just comes over this hedge, and everybody's just like, what in the fuck? And then followed immediately by four hounds, right? <laughs> four. So, and all these hounds come back over, like, what the shit? And these... You know, the raccoons kind of run into the woods and or running all around this under the house area. The hounds are fucking barking, going after him, hunting him down. And then come all these goddamn rednecks following him, right? Well, six of them anyway. <laughs> One of them's a guy. He's like, man, I figured y'all want something to film. We got something for you here, man. This shit's going to get crazy. Did you film any of it? No. 
because we were terrified. That's like the Louisiana Neighborhood Watch. They well, like sick the forest on you. Well, then basically within it felt like hours and seconds at the exact same time. All of the dogs come back. Only one of them actually has a raccoon, right? Only one of them actually has one, you know, sort of in its jaw, Aww. right? And it's just sort of like fighting it. And he's like, oh, he's got one. He's got one. Bouncer. Hey, bouncer. Wait, wait, watch this. Watch this. Bouncer. Get him. And he does like that. He goes, get him. And the dog, like, it's graphic, but like squares up and just <laughs> breaks its neck. Like just crack, kills the fucking thing. Now it's just a dead raccoon. <laughs> Whoa. And it puts it down. And we're all just like, yeah, that. That w- thank you <laughs> <laughs> for that image, but then it's not actually dead. You're like, let's go to the thing, and it's still kind of twitching, and the dude just goes, oh, fuck, man. Hey, grab my wand for me, says it to one of the other rednecks, wand being a twenty two, a rifle. Comes back with that, and he's like, Look, I got to get this done, man. I'm sorry. Y'all ain't got to watch. But gap, just pops this thing, just puts one in it right under the house. All of this takes place under the house. He asks, hey, if y'all want us to come back tomorrow night or something, we'll bring another round. Because he noticed there was no filming happening, right? Yeah. And then it was like, yeah, thank you guys very much for coming. And we were terrified that they were going to hang out because we had, like, you know, three girls with us. But they didn't. They just showed us that shit and then skedaddled. So it was all good. Ruined the, ruined the night. But it was all in good nature, though. They didn't show up maliciously. They were no. like, what's up? We'll bring the hurricane they just, through. They uh. just wanted us to watch an animal die, or more, more than one. They were they, Oh, that was the other thing. They were very disappointed that we only got one. Oh, see, now when you started the story, I didn't know there were girls with you. I thought it was just you and this other fellow. Oh, no, there was 10 of us. There were 10, ten of, of you. 10 of us, yeah. Oh, I thought I said that. You did. Yeah. Oh, you did? There were okay, like ten, yeah, we dropped people. Yeah, there was like 10 of us with it. Yeah, it was a Oh, crew. that's right. Okay. Yeah. Question from online. What year yeah. was it? 1999. 1999. Purvis, Mississippi. Wow. And yeah. you were 21? 21. I love rednecks. Yeah. Wow. God, I'm confident in the detail. If this is not, if this is untrue, I'm going to be like, well, well it has to be someone else's story if it's not maybe. his story. Yeah, maybe uh, yeah. Maybe it's one of those, uh, this did happen, but they actually killed four raccoons in front of us How many night. dogs were there? Uh, four. I want to say four. There might have been actually. That will be the part. I'm like, it was a flurry of fur. The best uh-huh. way I can remember it. So there might have been more dogs, but I remember specifically seeing four, and they were all ha- hound breeds. So when the raccoons came at you at like a wall, wall how, of raccoons, wall of raccoons. Yeah. How many <laughs> raccoons I, constitute a wall? I want to say sixteen. Oh, yeah. it 16? A, it, yeah. was a, it was a. It was definitely in the teens. It was a lot. <laughs> How did that happen? How did they get that? I st- I have no clue. They kind of wrangled these raccoons. I, I'm assuming because we didn't. They never because we left the next day. We're like we're not gonna hang out. This is weird. We were gonna stay for two nights. We only stayed for one. Um, I'm assuming it sounded like they had cages and shit in their trucks. Mm. I don't know because we never left that area. This all probably took about 15 minutes total. So you think they yeah. already had cages in the truck with raccoons? I think it? they went and caught the raccoons already, brought them to this area. Somehow, I don't I'm I'm speculating here, took the cages cuz there was a lot of racket. Uh-huh. And just aimed the door like had the dogs aim uh-huh. the I aimed the gate of the things and opened them and they just all ran. So what straight. happened after did they did you guys stick around for the second night? Fuck no. Yeah. No, we hung out that night. We filmed each other's reactions afterwards, like uh-huh. we interviewed each other. But everyone was pr- like, the, it, some, it, it was bad. Like it was, people were fucked up by that, by like seeing that. <laughs> yeah. what, a, what a strange I'm sure way. The girls for, were. Yeah. I'm sure the girls were like, get us the fuck out yeah. of here right now. Yeah, and we just, we just got, we just got super wasted, pounded all that hams, smoked all our <laughs> wow. swag, and then the next morning got the fuck out of there. And I've never been back to the tree frog since then. <laughs> Do we have Whoa. any questions online? Yeah. Some questions, some concerns. Uh, Ken Lofgren was the yeah. one who asked what year it was, uh-huh. and uh, he just, was he there? <laughs> he, well, he just commented and said nineteen nine was right after Blair Witch Project. Yeah, so yeah. that does check out. Okay. And um, Jessica commented and said that was the right gun sound effect. So she's pretty sure that that was a fact. The wand. Uh-huh. The, yeah, the, the wand. I'll never wand forget effect. that. The wand. Um, Weird. But Melody Martinez uh, thinks that possibly this could be a stolen story from a younger Conan O'Brien who once told a story about four raccoons or something. I'm not familiar, but wow. Um, yeah, don't so. all right. Don't know it. Wow, interesting. That what a strange way for those adults to spend their free time wrangling coons, yeah. dropping in on a party. How old were those Typical guys? Do you think? I guess, but uh, coon wrangling. I, I, Twenty-five, if I'm guessing, mid twenty. Yeah. They were not old. They were definitely not old. Uh-oh. And there was only one of them who spoke to us. That was another thing. 
I remember uh, it was very interesting. Only one of them actually communicated with us. The rest of them just kind of talked to each other. And he was like the liaison between. Uh huh. Because I remember at one point, one of the guys wanted to take a piss. Um, and we had to let him upstairs for some reason. He, you know, we'll bring live raccoons to be killed in front of you, but didn't want to pee. Didn't want to be <laughs> yeah. rude, just pee in the yard. Right, right. But he wow. was like, hey, can my buddy go up and take a piss? And we were like, sure. He's like, yeah, man, go ahead. It was like that kind of thing. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, story because, like, where do you find the lies in that? I don't you know, know what I mean. Like, well, of... it could be that he was one of the rednecks with the raccoons that went and crashed Whoa. somebody's. That house. could very see. He is from that could very, he was yes, very yes, yes. I saw the trauma it caused. T- took some speech classes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, we saw these pussies buying warm yeah. hams. Yeah, we got them. You don't, sound, you don't yeah. sound like you could be from Slidell. Oh, oh, he yeah. sounds just like everybody from oh, Slidell. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they like, kind of sound like the Bronx in like Southern Louisiana. Like it's really not quite a thing. Yeah. yeah. If okay. I if I get my, my if I talk I talked to my I called my dad yesterday on Father's Day, but of course I ended up talking to my mom for twice as long because I have a Southern mother. And yeah, like my my R's drop, my tongue flattens out, the accent just comes back full force, dude. You know? <laughs> oh, mine, uh, mine too. Yeah. It uh it. I took elocution lessons when I moved from Florida to Washington because people couldn't understand what the fuck I was saying. Mm. <laughs> and, and it still comes back occasionally, like on stage it comes back sometimes. Hell yeah. I try not to, but. Hell yeah, it does. <laughs> How old are you, Sean? Ask Ken Lofgren. 40. He's 40, Ken. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Well, two very good stories, and well, let's move it on. Uh, unless anybody has any questions, let's. I want to punch some holes, but those details are so. I confident know his and clear. details are like I had a lot of doubt about your story, you know, mm. and because uh, uh, the riverbank and all that kind of stuff. Do you know who Jerry Clower is? Oh my no. God, you and the fucking Jerry Clower. No. thing. Well, his biggest thing, <laughs> his biggest thing is a coon hunting story in Mississippi. Right, so that's why right. Jerry Clower was a comedian from like the seventies that Austin one time heard a record for, and he's like Jerry Clower. I Jerry love Jerry Clower. Clower. Sorry, <laughs> eat me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would if I could find it. Anyway, so uh, your turn. Second story. Second story. Uh, okay, so I was eleven or twelve, and I was in South Carolina at a track tournament at a uh, at a military base. I don't remember which military base, but um, it was with my school, uh, Florida School for Deaf and Blind, FSDB. And um, we were we were doing one of the events. Like, when I mean track media, it was all of the events. We actually had swimming events. And um, this school is uh, it's in Florida. It's Florida School for Deaf and Blind, so half the population of the school is deaf and half is blind. But it's like 7,000 kids. There's Ray Charles School, right? Ray yeah. Charles School, yeah. Ray Charles. That is fucking huge. Yeah, like it's a campus. 7,000? Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's wow, a, that's big. It's an actual campus. It's boarding, you know what I mean? Like it's boarding um, anybody with a visual impairment, audible impairment, or some developmental de- and impairment. And how long did you go to this school? Uh, from It's K through 12, but I went there from second grade till I believe seventh grade. Did you learn how to read Braille? No, I wasn't blind enough to read. Yeah. Learn. I learned sign language, though. They required us to learn sign language because, again, half of the school was deaf. So, but uh, so we were at, and the the track team was actually really, really, really good. Um, our football team was really good. Our swim team was really good. Our wrestling team. They didn't teach us anything about like, oh, you're blind, so you should probably people will feel. No, they were like, you fucking do it. Don't be a little bitch. Fucking do. It. You know what I mean? Like there was no. Right. They didn't want to teach us sympathy to feel sorry for ourselves. So we would. Other schools stopped wanting to f- uh, like go against our track team because we would beat them, and then they just we got beat by a bunch of fucking blind kids. Right. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> 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 How did he know where the hurdles were? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we were at this. Did uh, you guys do like the baton exchange and that kind of? Some of. I mean, like, yeah. not everybody was totally blind. Like, and with uh, with like sprinters, they have guide runners, which is basically a person who they have a tether, and the person next to them runs alongside them. And just is just running alongside them. They're not pulling them. So the idea is that they have to be faster than the person that they're running with, so they can because they can't pull the person. Right. So we had to have people who were training for the Olympics to f- run with some of our kids, Whoa. run with some of the kids. Yeah, the kids were fucking fast. So yeah. we traveled with this track team. We traveled everywhere. We went to the south. Um, they went to Germany. They went to France. I wasn't old enough to go when they went. My brother was. Um, but we went to this track meet in South Carolina at this military Was base. your brother also in the school? Yeah. 
Yeah, he's also a black albino, but not like me. He's not my real blood. He was adopted by my mom also because he was my best friend. His family situation wasn't great. He was just, uh, and so my mom, he just, he became my best friend and then kind of became my brother. So uh, he was there. But um, at this track meet, we were staying at a military base in South Carolina and we were, one of the events was going, the mile was going on and I was just kind of chill. I don't do the mile. So I was chilling out underneath the blue. What were your events? The 100, 200 long jump in track. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was good. Too. Wow, that was good. That was the Show look on everybody! I, I, I got to see that happen. <laughs> Prove it. I, 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 was, I, I went to yeah. the. I went to. I was good. I went to the Junior Olympics. I went. Um, uh, yeah, like I was. I was. I was actually fucking good. I won the Junior Olympics. Went to the Pan Am Games. I was. I was. I was, I was pretty dope. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Got, how often was there like a scratch? You know, like how, has your vision deteriorated since? No. So. Mm. So was it? Is like was there an issue with it being difficult for them to see where to jump from or stepping over that line? Well, a lot of the, like okay, like if in the swimming events when we had totally blind swimmers, um, there's a dude at the end of the pool with a big long stick and a tennis ball on the end of that stick, and when it's time for him to do his flip turn, he bops him on the head. Wow! And then with uh, guide runners, I told you about that. And then with um, with the jump, they just time their steps. They just know how many steps. To get, or there'll yeah, be that's somebody, probably a bad right. question. Or, Your or, sense of yeah, or there'll be somebody there to uh, to scream like tap, and that's when the it's tap is when he needs the you know tap is like, and then there's two more steps, and then he jumps. Hmm. So there's different ways that you figure it out. You right, know I mean? right, right. And not everybody's totally blind. Like some people are just visually impaired. My friend Ricky, hmm. who was running the mile at the time in South Carolina, he was he ha he just had one eye, so he was at that school. Okay. Um, so, but his other eye was was fine. Hmm. So, um, I mean, I, I have I have terrible vision. Well, it's it, yeah. usually it's people with non-correctable problems, right? Like my vision is not correctable. No. Yeah, yeah, they can't do. Shit. My little sister had stem cell and her vision. She had optic nerve hypoplasia. You familiar with that? Yeah. Like her optic nerves never rolling. She got to go do stem cells. Yeah, that, that won't work for me. Yeah, it didn't really work for her. That my dad <laughs> went uh, blind from uh, being exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. That's not how I got it, but yeah. that sucks. For, that sucks for. So what happened at this track meet? Oh, so I'm underneath the bleachers, and I'm just, you know, kicking it, waiting for the, the 100 to come up. And uh, this dude approaches me, and <laughs> he starts talking to me about the KKK, like trying to trying to recruit me. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? And he's like talking, you should come over here. And you, you know, there's a lot of type. We're, I know people think that we're just about hate and we're not, we're about love. And he's just talking to me and these two pro and I'm, I don't, I'm, tw I'm 11, 12 years old. Wow. I don't know how to fucking, Whoa. yeah, I don't know how to deal with this. And so, uh, and I also think it's funny because I'm like, he doesn't know I'm black. Yeah, even <laughs> even in the fifth grade, that's pretty funny. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't know I'm black. So I'm just like, I'm just gonna let him keep talking. So these two privates come up to him and they're like, you, you can't do that here. Like, you're not allowed. And he's like, this is America. This is a free country. And he's like, yeah, but this is a fucking military base, bro. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do yeah. that here. And he's like, I don't care. This is a this is. And so, and then, you know, uh, that goes on for like a minute, minute and a half. And this other older guy, sergeant, walks up. And he just walks up. Like, like every sergeant you've seen in the movie. Like how they're, son, this is, what is your major malfunction? You know what I mean? Like that right, guy, right, right. that's him. He just walks up and he's like, what the good God hell is going on over here? And the, the privates t and, uh, talk to the guy and they're like, yo, this is what's happening. And the guy's like, you can't kick me out. You're like, son, this is a military base. Uh, like he said, everything he said was cool. You know what I mean? Like this is, this may be a military base. You may be in America, but right now you are in my America. And you know what I mean? Like just the, the dopest shit that could have been said. <laughs> this dude is saying it. And he he uh he looks at me and he's like, and even if I wasn't, son, you are barking up the absolute wrong goddamn tree. Do you not see the naps in this kid's hair? And he's like, this is a black kid. You haven't been to fucking school. Get the hell off. You know, I'm just in just tearing this guy a new asshole. And I'm I'm just like, this is the greatest moment of my fucking life. And he never talks to me directly. Like he never said anything to me directly. He just referenced me. And he was like, now I'm going to give you two choices. One, you can get off my property. Two, you can get off my property in a bag. Choose. <laughs> and, uh, and the dude was just like, fuck you guys. And he left. Whoa. And, then, and then the sergeant just turned around and left. And then the two privates just kind of looked at me. And then they left. And then uh, I just was like, well, that happened. And then I left.
It was it was just a it was a very odd situation. So the guy that approached you uh, was a civilian or was he? He a, was he in was, the military. No, he wasn't in the military. He was a civilian. I assume that was just there watching the track meet. Uh huh. And was the sergeant that uh, gave him a piece of his mind? Was he in a uniform? Yeah, everybody else was in a uniform. And were they? Do you think they were in uniform and there to watch the game? I have absolutely no idea. Huh. I, there, I mean, like when we when we were actually on the base, like we ate in the cafeteria with military. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Well, I can see him being in. I mean, like yeah. last time I did like a military gig, they were all you know they're hanging around. If they're there like on duty for the day, they're just in uniform. Yeah. Maybe they're just kind of working the venue. So to speak. Did the guy show you, he didn't like pull out a hood and be like, you can get you one of these, man. <laughs> yeah. no, you can get had, you one of these, man. He, he, didn't have any, on. he didn't have any hood. He had a Confederate flag belt buckle and he had a, like he had a lot of pamphlets. And he's just trying to get this nice white kid to join what, his club. What, wait, where was this again? We're Florida? Nice no, this is South Carolina. South Carolina. The Clan, yeah. man. Nice, We're Carolina. at South Carolina. I don't know how to military base. Yeah. I think it's so funny, the <laughs> idea of like wow. a bunch of fucking Ku Klux Klan, like a meeting you see a bunch of Klansmen walking in putting their hoods on. And then just one guy walks in with like a Wu Tang t shirt and's like, Oh, a clan rally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <completely fun>. Wow. <laughs> that's... My bad. Yeah. Oh shit. I <laughs> screwed shit. that up. I, I hate when this happens where we're three stories through and I'm like, fuck, I believe all three so far. Well that's... That does sound like some Carolina shit. I grew up I'm an army brat. So uh, I've been off and on army bases all around the world and uh went to school on an army base. Oh nice. And so some of that doesn't necessarily ring true. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, and there's a, there's a lot of people online that think that it's far too obvious for an albino person to be recruited by the Ku Klux Klan because, you know, it's kind of a... I mean, those guys aren't scoring Mensa scores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Those dudes aren't exactly... You'd be surprised at the amount yeah. of black people that don't know I'm black. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know no, that I mean? part I could told that part I totally could see happening, but for uh for an army for a sergeant to come over there and for other privates to be that like that part, that's the part where I'm like that you know, that doesn't seem well, true I mean, necessarily, that part. But then I think about your first story about <laughs> you being legally blind and going down a ravine to take a poop in a stream and I'm all like <laughs> what the fuck are, is up with these stories is what I'm thinking. I love, I love the idea that the part that she has a problem with is like, you can't see in the woods. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everything why would else you, probably yeah. happened. But why you, would you have the instinct to poop in your water? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I just don't. Yeah, well, because my father was legally blind and my father, I hate to say this, but my father actually died from falling off of a ravine. Okay. Like oh. three years. Yeah, because my, my dad's it's legally blind, so, so that's why I'm all like... Mm. Here, here's what I will say. my I am not legally... Albinos are not legally... Bl I have a driver's license. Like I'm not, You can drive? Yeah, I'm not legally blind. Like My vision doesn't work like other people's vision. My vi There's no... It's not correctable, but I'm. it's not blurry. Like, there's mm -hmm. not... A, you know what I mean? Like, with a normal person, when they have glasses, it's because at a certain level, it gets blurry. And they can't see anything. Like, so what is the shift in your vision? What the is shift, the difference? The difference is, is okay, you know how something looks to you when it's just too far away for you to see it? Uh-huh. It's not blurry. It's just too far away for you to see it. That's the exact same thing with me, except that distance is closer. So, so you see a guy in the crosswalk, and you're like, okay, that guy has blue eyes, a mustache, and a chipped tooth. I see a guy in the crosswalk. I see his eyes, but I couldn't tell you the color. You know what I mean? Like so. It's, man, that's specific. It, well, it's, that man in the crosswalk with his blue eyes <laughs> and his chipped tooth and his yeah. hey, t-shirt. Like your vision for like so a how, weekend. Yeah. How close does that point come? Because like we've worked, we've worked together a little yeah. bit, and I've like I've, I noticed things like like you have you use your phone super close. So yeah, like even yeah. right here, the phone just looks far away. Well, no. It, what the thing about it is, is that I'm also far sighted, so I actually see it better when it's right here. But mm -hmm. I can't. But it's too far away for me. To see, but it's I'm far sighted. Right. So I can't see it here. I have to hold it here and. See Squint. That's what I'm doing. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So this is actually too close for me to see it. I have to squint, and then it's like it. It's it's our and, vision. And you work. have a driver's license. Yeah. I've never been. Wow. In, I'm, I'm a good. Well, I'm a good driver because right. I have to be. You I'm not. Yeah. You yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not turning the radio and putting on. Right. You know what I mean? Like I can't eat and I can't do that. I actually have to pay attention. Do we have any questions, Austin? 
Yeah, but I think I'm gonna save it for okay. the uh, for the recap at the end here because okay. uh, Ken Ken might have brought up a good point. All right, Ken, All our right. Washington expert. Now yeah, keep in mind, Ken, Ken, this Ken guy, Ken Lofgren's 0 and 4 in the game, <laughs> but yeah. this is one he might have kind of a handle on because it does take place in Washington, mm. and he might have some facts for us on the setting. So we're we're, we're gonna hold off. All right, so let's move on to your second. But two great stories, and if I'm asking questions or being doubtful, just that's part of the game. I, oh, I yeah. don't uh, yeah. I, 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 think yeah. you're like a bad it. person. Or question like what you game. got shaken, no, yeah. Like but it's game. interesting to see, like, because we just met today to see how people you don't know tell a story, and then you're like, God, if I, I don't know this person at all, and I and it, they both sound so far fetched. I've never heard you be apologetic or <laughs> weary to be like you're going like, I'm sorry, I'm not calling you a liar, but this is <laughs> well, like yeah. bullshit. No, because I, because my, you know, because uh, my dad had vision problems, right. so like I, you know, I want to, you know, not be a jerk about it. Oh you no, know? I'm. Yeah. I, as long as I don't, I don't get offended. I mean, like, come on, look at me. If I got offended, I'd be dead by now. Yeah. And yeah. why were you under the bleachers yeah. just to get out of the sun? And I'm, that's a serious question. No, actually, uh, that's a that's a, that's why I should have been under the bleachers. But I was just under the bleachers because I like going under the bleachers. It's fun. <laughs> you know? Okay, that's freak show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Carving your initials. Yeah. <laughs> you're now taking a w another dump. <laughs> you know, knowing your seeing your history, like got I was just I was just <laughs> nearby. Right. I had just <laughs> seen it. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Just under too far. The, okay. They all float down here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I but now that you're talking about how your vision is exactly how your vision works, it it throws into doubt then the first story to me even more. Oh. Okay. You know what I mean? Like But like Jessica said, when you got a mm. shit, you got a shit. When you got shit. And also young enough to be embarrassed where he goes like he didn't want to come to all the party, like, hey everybody, I'm freaking out, I got shit. Does anybody have anything I could what, what should I do? He's just like, I'm gonna get far away because this is about to happen and yeah. I'm gonna try and figure I it also out. Also drunk. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't thinking. You know, what's the responsible thing to do? The thing, this, this <laughs> yeah. is the thing that that you. That, this is where I'm interested because not having a motive to go under the bleachers is suspect. Yes. Because I think of the bleach under the bleachers was like fucking Tortuga. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know I mean? like, like you only you only went down there to get yeah, some debauchery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. And sometimes Good point. When, when you're a kid, sometimes that debauchery is just splitting a Pall Mall that you stole from your grandma. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, oh, that's the fucking <laughs> greatest explanation. But the yeah. bleachers are fucking Tortuga. That's Look fucking at, Tortuga but it, down yeah. there, brother. It must be true though that in a situation like a track meet, being albino, you did have to find a lot of hiding hiding out spots where you can just ha be hanging on the sun yeah well i mean there's the, the funny thing is that the school i went to actually had a lot of albinos because since oh, all sure. albinos yeah, have yeah, a sure. vision problem and since the, if you're out of state going to this school it was like 48 grand but if you lived in the state of florida it was free so everybody who had an albino kid or kid with vision problems or audible problems or Developmental problem, just move to fucking Florida. Wait, wait, uh, uh, maybe I'm mixing up. A no, that makes a lot. sense. That <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Is it? What do you say? It was an? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just mixing it up. Was it a? It was a military academy specifically for. No, 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 they no, were no, doing no. a track meet we at, track a at a military academy. military base. Military base. <laughs> military base. Yeah, that's why I have a questions about. Okay, I had that Battle mixed up that? in my head because yeah. an albino military base like <laughs> these, these colors already ran. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't gonna run no more. God damn it! <laughs> you just you're, you just exclusively training spies. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I need to hear. I, I'm so curious about his second story. Yeah, oh, let's yeah, go yeah. for your second story. Oh, um, all right. So, um, also s somewhat similar. <laughs> Strange how much we have in common in a way. It is, um, it is. uh. So my, uh, I'm gonna paint the picture first. This was in 2014, th 13, 2013. Um, it happened in New Orleans. There's a bar in the warehouse district of New Orleans called uh, Lucy's, uh, where upstairs there was there used to be a lot of comedy shows there, right? And I, directly catty corner to that bar is a bar called Vic's Kangaroo Cafe. It's just a Australian themed, perfect little shitty dive bar in the warehouse district of New Orleans. And two thousand now. Growing up, I have a cousin. His name is Jay. He's like nine months older than me. Growing up, we were like best friends. Okay, he he lived in a different part. He lived like his parents lived in Lakeview. That's where he grew up in Lakeview, New Orleans. We would only see each other three or four times a year as like teenagers, family events and shit. But we were like homies. We got in trouble constantly. We were best fucking friends. We talked on the phone. We were pen pals because this was pre like social media or anything. Wrote each other letters. We were best friends. In our late teens, we kind of went different ways, right? He 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 became uh, he, he got into he went to the military. He got into the military. 
um, he was in the air marshal program. He was an air marshal for the entirety of the air marshal program. Right? Mm-hmm. He did that for a while. In 2013, it wasn't like we reconnected, but I just started seeing more of him. I just hadn't seen a lot of him in you know five years. Um, and from what we knew then, he had a desk. He he said he he had a desk job at uh, some at, not the air marshal. Oh, the U.S. marshals. He he had a desk job, so he was like getting out more. He was uh, he had a family now, which I knew his family sort of. But you know, I was also out of the picture a lot being a comedian. I left New Orleans in two thousand six. I didn't go back as much as I wanted to. He had moved his family to uh, uh, Alabama by this point. So it, it, anyway, 2013, it was the summer. It was a perfect storm where he was in town. I was in town in New Orleans. I was doing some shows. He wanted to come hang out. I hadn't hung out with him in a long-ass time. It was great. He comes to the show at Lucy's. Uh, he has his two younger sisters with him. I have my younger <clears throat> brother with me. Then we go across the street to the bar, to Vicks Kangaroo Cafe, and we're just <coughs> sinking him back, having a good old jolly fucking time. And we're like, hey, let's go somewhere else. So one of, one of my sisters is in the bathroom. The other one's, like, closing out her tab. Jay and I are the only ones who, like, step. We step outside at the same time. Now, I am a short, fat fucking tub of lard. My cousin Jay is, like, 6'6", six, six, sculpted out of marble, right? Like, standing next to each other, we're like, the, like, we're like twins, like Danny DeVito, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> like, he's a sharp, just in shape tall, masculine dude, and I'm just, right? We step outside, <laughs> and I'm... I just, I just feel so bad that we're on, like, no, you're not. Uh, <laughs> well, well, you're not. He, you say that, but then if I, if he walked in here and I stood next to him, be like, oh, yeah, you definitely okay. are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just felt bad that we're all like, yeah, you are. Kind of are. Short. Yeah, yeah. I am. I, I wondered when I should console. <laughs> no, 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 you don't. I'm five foot nine, 220. I deserve it. But we have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I wish I could. Uh, maybe I'm an albino. I, too. Do, I feel yeah, like yeah. Fine, cool. And your military cousin, he was at that base yeah. where that tracked me. Jesus yeah. Christ! If I found out I, I, oh, I was dude. an albino, you know, I'd never let that go. No, dude, that would why be. Would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> so he's, he, he, you? you know, we we step outside, and I remember I was looking down to light a cigarette. At the time, I was still a smoker, and I look up, and there's basically this fucking kid, not kid, I mean, twenties probably, in the middle of the street getting stomped. By three dudes, right? And this is in the the warehouse district of New Orleans is not seedy, really, you know. And it's a well lit, not seedy area. So it was like a shocking, like this doesn't belong here. Like this dude's just getting three guys just fucking stomping this dude. There's a car stopped, all the doors are open, and then there's three more guys who are clearly friends of the guy getting stomped, all standing around. Two of them have their shirts off, and they're all going like. Stop! Stop it! You better! You fucking! Stop, you better fucking stop! I swear to God, fucking stop! You guys, back, you better back the fuck off! Or you're gonna get. But they're, they're not doing shit. They're dope friends, right? Yeah. They're watching right. their friend get stomped, but they're not doing a goddamn thing about it. Is it right? a busy night out there? What time? What this day was, we go? It was Wednesday night. I remember so it's that. like kind of not a it's not a busy night outside the bar. Not a lot of not people. really. So and, if you and go the, outside, there's this lonely, weird right. little stomp out happening. And also, I it's a wide enough street to where a car just drove by at one point, just around, just went around. This was pretty as soon as I saw it. Some car just sped by, slowed down, and then turned the corner and parked. And those people got out. I remember that to hmm. come watch to watch. Yeah, Jesus. it was crazy. Oh, Jesus. It was <laughs> fucking. It was fucking. Crazy. I got a minute. Yeah. And and so my cousin, being the former military guy he was he's in this thing in seconds to break it up and i'm like watching all this happen like oh shit do i have to fight too now because i can't and <laughs> i'm just a filmmaker right, right, i don't right, know right, what right, right, right. <laughs> exactly exact so uh, <laughs> so funny. uh yeah it's funny so like within but like i always knew my cousin jay was a bad dude right but this was fucking insane like he jason born this situation because all three of these dudes now converge on him and he's just like you know, elbow, like, bap to the sternum, <laughs> like, gets one guy in the headlock, punches another guy in the fucking, <laughs> wow. like, right in the stomach, knocks the wind out of it, and elbows him in the face, throws the other, like, so fast. It was so fucking impressive to the point where these three dudes were now like, we get the picture, we're out. They all kind of back down, and he just holds court. He's just standing there kind of protecting the dude who's now laying on the ground bleeding and somewhat unconscious while all of his homies are like, yeah, yeah, 
not having done shit, right? <laughs> yeah. So these three dudes get in that, their car, that car that I mentioned that was just kind of parked with its doors open. They get in, and they drive off. And everything's like, what the fuck? And right then, my two sisters come out, and my brother and his sisters, and like, what the shit just happened? Right? It was insane. Jay, my cousin, is sort of tending to this dude. Like, is he okay? He's bleeding and somewhat unconscious. I'm talking to him like, are you okay, you fucking Bruce Lee, <laughs> Jason Statham, son of a bitch? Yeah. Are you all right? And then a cop car finally rolls up because someone had fi- I called the cops. And it was this perfect moment of the cop car pulls up, the cops start to get out, and someone goes, there! And we look down the street, and the three guys who had done the stomping, no had way. simply driven down the block, parked, and were coming back. They were on their way back to finish the job, right? They were on their way back to fight more. Oh. Right? Now, nice. we would later learn one of them had a gun on them. What? We would later learn this. That's why they parked clearly. And Who said there? What? When... So, a random per- I still don't know. It they were just, saying, there's the guy. Someone's like, oh, there, there. And we all look. And there they are. They're, they had gotten out of the car and were like, come in back to fucking finish the fight. And I th- think we got a master fucking liar on uh, our hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, go. Uh, do you want me to continue or get a question? No, I want keep, to, no. Right, keep going, I love it. I love keep it. Going. You're going for it. Keep, keep going. So there's a cop. The cops are like, oh, there. And then that's when you see those three guys go, oh, shit, cops. But then they can't do shit because now there's cops coming down this street. It was like they pinned them in, basically. So it was like, oh, no. Now these guys just scatter. And where we're standing, two of them go running in one direction. One of them basically comes running where I'm st- and towards us, right? And I'm like, I guess I'll probably stop this guy. I should do something here. But this dude just straight up one, two jukes me. Like, easy. <laughs> like, just straight up, like, twist, like, does the pop with the shoulders. I fall for it, and I'm on my ass. And you I looked, broke your ankles in the street oh. without a ball? Standing still. I was standing still. I <laughs> broke my ankles. I'm on the ground. But I see my cousin, Jay, go sprinting after this dude like a fucking gazelle. It was at that moment where I realized how differently our lives, <laughs> yeah. uh, the paths in our lives right. had gone. I was like, I couldn't even stand still enough to catch the guy, and he's already after him. But I pop up, and I just chase them. I'm like, I'm, that's my cousin. That's my blood. My brother's following me. We finally catch up to Jay, and I remember seeing it from, like, a block, I don't know, half a block down. He somehow caught the dude and, like, sweep tackled him. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Like, came up from beside him, like, tripped him and grabbed him at the same time and, like, got him on the ground and then was fucking holding him down, had his hands, one hand pinned behind his back. He's like, calm the fuck down. Calm the fuck down. Right then, another cop car rolls up because have you ever called the cops before? Yeah. I have never seen called that the cops. <laughs> If you've ever seen the cops get called, they have, they do that, where it's like one car, one car, mm-hmm. another car, then another car. That's pretty much what happened. There's like eight cars by the end of the night. But now another car rolls up, and one of the cops gets out, and he's going for his fucking taser. He's going for it because he doesn't know the situation. And then I hear my cousin Jay yell, holster your goddamn weapon, and then he throws a badge. Throws a badge. Now, I'm not going to say his last name, but he's basically Agent Blank. FBI so throws badass. a badge, that is throws cool. a badge, right? And everything's like, what the fuck? And the cop just immediately, like, oh, uh, 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 just stuttering, removes his hand from anywhere near his taser. It's like, yeah, uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me your, you know, he's like, give me your handcuffs. Give me your handcuffs. My cousin cuffs the guy and then gets up, walks away with the cop to brief him, I guess. And I'm standing there like, <laughs> I need a goddamn briefing. <laughs> I, need- I need a goddamn briefing. <laughs> so basically, like, there's chaos. There's cops talking to all of us who witnessed the thing. They've arrested the three dudes. They've caught all three. This is where we found out one of them had a gun because while the other cops were chasing him, they saw him throw it in the trash can, and they went back to that trash can. Like, oh, look, a twenty-two. So A wand. That's a uh, – well, like a pistol, though. Um, <laughs> Damn it. That is scary to think about, the fact that one of them did have yeah, a weapon on Yeah, that's fucking wild. And then my cousin, basically, we finally are – it's us again – just him and I walking away. I, I, he's like, walk aside with me. And we're smoking a cigarette. And he fills me in entirely. Basically, he had been an undercover FBI agent for like three years now. His <laughs> wife didn't know. His kids didn't know. No one else knew. And in fact, I swore to him if I ever told this story publicly, because he knew I would at some point, uh, I wouldn't say the actual agency. So it's not the FBI. Uh-huh. But I'm not going to say which one it is. I owe him that much. And uh, end of story. I fucking want it to be true. 
That is how I, I have major problems with this town. story. Because first of all, you said you said about the sister. You said I had my sister. I had my brother. He had his two sisters, and then all of a sudden, you have two sisters too. Yeah, we both you, we both had two sisters there. I, I I can I can understand how I fumbled that part up, but I will admit oh. when I, think I he mentioned that he had brought his own two sisters also and my no, brother. He said brother. He said that. That Jay brought his two sisters brought and two I sisters. brought my brother. Yeah, maybe I imagined only three extra total people. Yeah. But I will, the Wednesday night thing, the yeah, it yeah. all be facing pretty. But let me say also this. My other problem with the story is <laughs> I'm so all over you right now. No, my please apologies. do. Please do. But you, so, so you guys ran after those guys that were coming back and there was already a police car there? Already, policemen were there, and you guys were already do. You were already doing that with. Pol- what were the police doing? They were just like, "All right, go chase those guys." From what I, from what I remember, uh, a bunch of them were tending to the. A bunch of them were like, "Wait, what's this guy?" Because oh, the guy got his ass. Because the real guy bad. was like stomped out. That dude was fine. I mean, the, the ambulance came from eventually, but that dude was like bleeding out in the street. To my recollection, the the, the first the first two cops that were there. We're very like, whoa, 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 what's what's this situation? I can't I have a hard time and believing that New Orleans cops are gonna have empathy over someone already laying on the you, ground you, before uh, trying to chase you, someone. That is down. a good that is a damn good point. That is a damn good point. Well, Shit. I'm a little uh, befuddled by the agency situation, <clears throat> which if it doesn't matter, yeah. if, if the FBI is just a moniker that you use to cover up the real agency, you did say U.S. Marshal in the beginning. I did. Also, I mean, not the truth. So you were just that was, no, that was, no, no, that's what he told us. Oh, okay. That, okay, so that was, a, that was something he said that wasn't true. That's something everyone thought he did for a living. And then the thing that's the mind fuck of it all is if I do believe that, then that means the uh, wall of raccoons is alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because this is such a cool story if I it's know, true. I know, I know, I know. Well, well, any questions? Ask away, because I'm sure, I'm sure there's some internet people like hey, this guy's fat. I can't believe anything he said. <laughs> no, <laughs> they won't say that. <laughs> I mean, right? It all, it all lined up when you said mm. you couldn't do shit when that dude was running by. Yeah. I mean, you, you have been referred to online, and I wasn't gonna give credence to this joke because it was uh, killed on the on the uh-huh. chat here. But um, welfare is that Galifian X oh, yeah, has, yeah. has been yeah. your moniker I mean, online, I, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> and, and, and that's what's, oh my god, it's so. I'm the one gonna say it, but if we're on the subject. <laughs> I just figured it's so creative. Everyone who thinks I look like Zach Galifianakis, which if you, I don't. I don't think you do. I, we're both just pudgy guys with beards. But Dude. keep, but keep the comments coming like that because you're always real smart and the first person to ever think of it. Well, and that comes from. I'm 100 percent <laughs> with you because yeah. people call. I get people think I'm mini me. Oh, okay. Ooh, that's an interesting one. And I'm like, dude, he's a motherfucking midget. <laughs> full grown. <laughs> <laughs> like, they don't say I look you're, like you're him. They think that it's me. They're like, there he is, full grown midget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, want, I loved your work when you were younger, man. Yeah. How much <laughs> HDH do you think I've yeah. like, And he, like, died five years ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Did, we, did, did we figure out which one of us is cut rate, Bill Burr? Um, they, were, I think that was also Melody Mar- Martinez who was um, referring to Nathan, but I think before she realized Nathan was black, so hopefully now she probably feels like. <laughs> Look, Melody. Or something. <laughs> ah, she's ridiculous. Um, I can't believe it. That's fucking brutal. It's too much. It's brutal. Yeah. Wow. So what are the questions? Uh, a lot of points. A lot of questions, a lot of speculation because of the details. Uh, you know, everybody's yeah, always talking about You a lot of these. details. Yeah. That's why I'm saying it's interesting when, when a person who has never been on the show before tells uh, two stories, and, the, and your first story didn't have that many details, but your second story had many details. But you, both your stories had a lot of details. That's why it's kind of tricky. I've never been this stumped before, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So what were their questions? Anything else? Um, they're, pretty much everybody's making their um, decisions right now. Jessica's made her decision without even having to hear the recap. She's pretty sold are on you, it. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah, and Melody uh, made her decisions before both of you even started your second story. She Whoa. Was wow. Wow. So she didn't wow. even need the to The ball's look. on Melody, wow. by the way. Yeah, yes, yeah. She's yes. really rip-roaring today. Really yeah. going after you. Well, yeah. the, if if she turns out being full of shit, we could say the bowels on Melanie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, you got her back. <laughs> Power <laughs> dude. Wow, dude. Brett, have yeah. you been listening along, Brett? Hello there, everyone. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I uh, well, of course, as you know, I uh, always go smoke a joint during the second story. <laughs> <laughs> do you have the camera on you, by the way? Um, do you really need to yeah, see me? Yeah, let everyone see who we're talking oh my to. God, Jeez, come on, you guys. Come on, you. you Hi, th- everyone. There he is. 
Look at him. The rich that, man's Henry Rollins. He does look good. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I definitely believe that a wall of raccoons is always on the loose in Louisiana and Mississippi <laughs> area. So I believe that story to be true. Really? How'd they have that kind of control over those coons? Mm-hmm. Well, those coons are probably They're just, just like being them. chased by dogs. They, yeah. were, they probably just had the dogs in the cages and let the dogs out to rouse the coons out of the swampy lands and toward the uh and they just herded them toward the uh cabin of unsuspecting children but wall of raccoons though well see what i kind of thought happened when we would go hunting in the ocala national forest which you probably know of nathan um we would use our dogs to chase deer Uh and the deer would you know often chase them through like somebody else's hunting situation you know in another block of town so i kind of thought maybe they just were running the coons and the coons coons happened to run through uh tree frog camp yeah yeah. and maybe that's what happened and raccoons are you know i mean they are in packs yeah it's very seldom like just one raccoon oh really yeah no, they yeah, if they're one, they're like rabbit or something. Like I that. saw a picture online where, like, taken like thirty years ago, where uh, it was a woman who was camping with other women or whatever, and they heard a bunch of rustling, and she just put with film, put her a camera out with a flash and flash it, and there literally was like fifty raccoons, just like whoa. That that yeah. helps me believe yeah. that part. Then that's May- true. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe they're all always lurking in the dark. Even when you see two, maybe there's there's thirty lurking in yeah, the darkness no, yeah, in the woods. And when they got creatures. the dogs yes. out, they all move at once. Yeah, they're maybe though social. they weren't even in the truck. Maybe but, they just let those dogs out, and they just knew there'd be <laughs> raccoons everywhere. But yeah. am I really gonna go? I don't know. I can't. It. I think it's because I enjoyed the second story from there. Uh-huh. I think I'm like that would be badass if that was true. But it, it seems insane for me to pick that 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 his cousin was secretly like maybe a CIA or FBI. You know what I yeah. mean? Over yeah. this, uh, some some weird dudes came through and busted up our country party. That could happen. Le- Leah confirmed the the raccoon picture you saw this morning. She said she also saw it, so that is a fact. Oh, Cause oh she, she, cause she, she, that, she commented right? about it, and then you made the comment. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. A little yeah. Bit of a delay, so, but oh, maybe good. the coon wall is a you know. Yeah. I don't know. So why don't we recap uh, the first? Uh, uh, let's before we take a vote. Okay. Now before I recap this story, I do have a question for you, Nathan. Yeah. Where go. was the state forest, or what was its name that you were at where this happened? It was the forest right next to Olympia, Washington. Mm. Did you say its name when you said the? It's name? Capital Forest. Because initially he said Evergreen State Forest. I don't know which one. It's the one that's not near Evergreen State College. It's in. The ca- I don't know the name of it, but and Ken it's, it's, said in the, it's in the woods. It's he, up, too. He said there's definitely no Evergreen State Forest. He said maybe there's Evergreen State College, there's so maybe Evergreen he State tried College. to use it's, that as like a right. deterrent. It's, it's, it's up. It's, you have to go. It's like where the logging tracks are. Hmm. Well, hopefully he'll catch up and comment by the time I get done recapping your two stories Okay, here. but make the recap super quick. He's 21 or 2, getting hammered in the woods of Washington. He was in the forest at a bonfire when he suddenly had to poop. He found a stroop to, stream to power Duke over, and when he suddenly noticed the fire growing, he hears cops, and they start to let it rip. he starts to let it rip, but the cops holler for him. <laughs> they were going to release the K-9. He grossly didn't wipe and pulled up his pants, only to realize the poop had cast it away into his pants, and the cops re- <laughs> released him but embarrassed him. Fantastic the recap. Party. Thank you. God, like, <laughs> like a court reporter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. all facts here. So, uh, story number two: He's eleven or twelve, which I thought was funny because he was twenty-one or twenty-two in the first one. Um, he's eleven or twelve in South Carolina, doing track for Florida School for the Deaf and Blind, who happened to be fully f- full of freakishly fast kids that had to train with Olympic athletes. He was chilling during the mile, waiting for his event when this guy comes up to him and tries to convince him to join the clan. And an older sergeant approaches and says some really cool shit that scares off the clan man. And he was free to go about his day. <laughs> All right, so we're going to tackle mm, these stories mm-hmm. first because you know what you brought up in the recap, which I forgot about, that you were 11 or 12 years old yeah. and right. that you were at a track meet. Mm-hmm. That seems a little young to be at a track meet. Like, that seems, that part is what kind of gets me a little bit when you not, mentioned that. Not the clan man <laughs> coming up <laughs> no, to a 12-year-old no, that, boy? <laughs> no, I believe that completely. Yeah. But, uh, and someone thinking that you were white, I completely believe that because people are idiots. But I think I'm going to say, God, it's such a tough one. Mm. I'm going to say, I mean, that's nuts that you went in the woods with vision <laughs> problems, you know? That's the, that's the part that... Dude, I've had, to, <laughs> I've, had, I've had that by any means necessary. Feel like, I'm, this is happening yeah. now, I just got to get away. I believe the first story, I think, I, that because of your point, 
I don't. I I played sports all the way up like uh-huh. that. So I didn't. I don't think I actually went to a track meet like that until seventh grade, sixth grade, seventh grade maybe. And that's not eleven or twelve. No, that's. If he can get down the stairs of this basement to the comedy store mm-hmm. c- podcast room, he can definitely make it down an embankment and some force in Washington. That, it's that small detail that unravels the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> unravels the, the whole. All thing. right. So what do you think? Like, what does Jessica say? What is the first? What does she say is a lie? And Jessica lie. thinks that the. Let me check and just make sure she thinks that Nate's first story is true. So she thinks the poop story is true. But we all know that Power Jessica's dude. a big fan of poop. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's uh, true. How can you not be? Yeah, and what do you think? Which one do you think? I'm going to go ahead and say that I believe the first one. You think the first story is true? Yeah, I think the, I think the track meet one. Uh, yeah, you had too many reasons with the military stuff and what you said about, you know, that seeming out of the ordinary, attract me. Elect even electing which events you do as an eleven-year-old. That seems kind of young. Yeah, because were there te- were there high schoolers at this track meet? Yes. Then that's a lie. And the guy was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to make you feel guilty. Yeah. How about this? I agree. God damn it! I love it. It's like come on this podcast, tell one lie. <laughs> you fucking dirty <laughs> you piece of shit. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think the first one's a lie? What do I you think I. D- being a fellow Southern born <laughs> uh, short squat man uh, who seems to have the same proclivity for uh, Power poop, poop, gym, uh, yeah, poop gymnastics. That's what it I believe be the first one. It felt too, it just felt like home. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's that? We should have bailed on the second one. We should build a second one. You got, you're talking about this short squat thing. This motherfucker said he did long jump, dude. Oh, no yeah, way! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no way! You did long jump. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but, they tap you. Yeah, yeah. I you think should the, sit down. Like, anyway, <laughs> what do you think, Brett? Can't see you jumping, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely think it's possible that the uh, the poop story is true because I am pooping my pants right now. <laughs> 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 These things happen, These so things happen. I think happen. that one's true. Okay. I just think you guys are so racist for saying that white men can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love when it's convenient. It. <laughs> okay, when yeah. it's convenient. You can jump down an embankment if you got a shit. Hey. So did you give your answer already? Yeah, I think the first story is probably true because uh, I can't see even a crazy Klan man coming up to somebody at a track meet knowing that, well, I mean, he's got to look like a 12 year old boy. And you got to know that guy's parent or that kid's parents is somewhere and you might get your ass beat, especially in like South Carolina or something. So I'm not buying the Klan man story. All right, so we've done our vote. Which one is the lie? The first one. No oh, way! No, no. Oh, bitch. Yeah. Really? Yeah. The whole game. Wow, yeah. what a good no. liar. Yeah. Seriously. Wow. Yeah, that was wow. good. You always buy the poop story. You always yeah. buy the poop you story. Always <laughs> buy the poop. <laughs> that is genuinely and what wait, my thought the, was. And the subtlety of... Jeez, <laughs> oh, I can't the, believe you The physicality, he's wearing the pizza by the slice shirt and everything. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you know? It's like, of course what this guy fuck? poops a lot. Yeah, of course I fucking <laughs> take dumps. Yeah, but, but wow, so man. long jumps at 11. I, yeah. I started. I started doing track year. Round. This is a. The school is. It's a K through twelve. So I started heavily doing track year round when I was in second grade. Okay. And it was. It's year round. So it was. And it was all of the the all of the people. You know what I mean? Like the whole. All well, of the, all every the yeah. The high yeah, school was right. yeah. The high yeah. school was with. You did everybody right. did the track together because it, it was K through twelve. So everybody just had track practice at the same time. Hey, man, you want to join the KKK? We're trying to have a track team. <laughs> so We're trying I, to put our foot back in there. I feel a little confused. So, but but you guys all would go on a military, like to the, where the school was on the military base. And, but then did they have like a junior high and high school track together? Or? Well, yeah, like we would, we would go, we would go against other track teams like we uh like you, you probably don't know what the hershey games are the hershey games is a big track meet that um, sounds like where you poop yourself in the, <laughs> <laughs> the hershey make who can poop the fastest yeah. i would have won that by the way i just want to let that uh-huh. be known yeah. uh-huh. but no we like we we were very good to the i, I was being literal when people when i say other schools stopped wanting to Compete against us, right? So, oh. so uh, because who wants to get people? It's a morale killer that, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but that's so. So sad. we would just go anywhere, and a lot of these tracks, because like I said, this was all in training for the Junior Olympics, right? Okay. And for like the Pan Am Games, and for like the Special Olympics, and back then the Special Olympics just meant in some way you have a deformity. So if you just didn't have one, like your right arm was gone, then you can join. Nothing else is wrong with you. So those mother like. 
retarded people can run. You know what I mean? Like that does, it, their legs are are still fine. So so we had some fast people. So the junior like the the special olympics was almost harder than the junior olympics was yeah for once we're losing to the audience because leah and ken who ken by the way never got one right both got it right and so did melody so right now we oh, got really? her, uh, good get on them asses on white wow. i was sure i had it this time so the wow. first story none of that was true i mean i did drink in the woods a lot but i didn't uh, i have crapped myself <laughs> <laughs> But never in the woods uh, with the dog. I thought, honestly, I thought that y'all were going gonna to pick up when I said uh, the dog because I don't think rangers do have dogs. Yeah. That's what I said earlier. I yeah. Why the, did I do Those are the guys from yeah. Sean's story. Yeah. Yeah. They just pulled up with their <laughs> yeah. dogs. Oh my rangers, God. we're going to unleash the horses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They're just going to gallop. You made me doubt myself. <clears throat> wow. Let's, okay. go, let's move on to the recap of the second story. We have somebody that's just second listening that's not, that can't uh -huh. watch or driving in uh, Madison. She says that uh, this is a voice twin of Pat Oswald I have here on my right. And I, and I haven't heard that because I've been looking at his face while uh -huh. he's talking. So I'm going to try yeah, to listen to him now. You know what's a you know what's hilarious is someone once asked me, like, are you related to Pat Oswald? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> that's how names work. Yeah. <laughs> we have the same last, I have the, his first name as my last name. That, yeah. That's how it works. Right. <laughs> Fuck genetics. No. It's, right. it's all about the names. Well, um, the relative of Pat <clears throat> Oswald, Sean Patton here, grew up in the Staten Island of New Orleans, Slidell, Louisiana. Him and some buddies go over to Purvis, Mississippi in 1999 and stop at a grocery store to buy a warm ham beer. <clears throat> they get stuck in the mud and hear some guys hollering gibberish at them, and a guy pulls up to winch them out of the mud. And the whole reason they were traveling to this camp, to the tree frog, was to film a backwoods Blair Witch proje project at the camp. So they're there. Four sets of headlights come down the driveway and start yelling at them to start filming and uh, a slew of raccoons, a wall of raccoons, if you will, flood past them, chased by hounds and rednecks. And uh, one of them was sh shooting a twitching raccoon, and then they left after that. Uh -huh. um, so story two, 2013, in the warehouse di district of New Orleans, Lucy's, a little bar next to Vic's Kangaroo Cafe, is where he was hanging. He has a cousin named Jay who he was uh, good friends with, but life circumstances, circumstances kept, him, kept him a little estranged. They reconnected, and he had a family working on working as a U.S. Marshal, supposedly. We don't know what agency in Alabama. He's a self-admitted admitted short, fat tub of lard. This is his words, not mine. And while his cousin was big and <laughs> macho, he goes to uh, light a cigarette, and they notice this kid getting stomped in the street, and his friends are there not, getting, not helping. Three assailants run away when Jay goes to chase them. Cops roll up. Someone points at the, out the guys. They start chasing him. One guy jukes Sean, but Jay chases him like some kind of predator animal, throws up his badge, says, I'm with the FBI. After the scene was clear, he comes uh, clean to uh, welfare, Zach Galifianakis, that he, I'm, I'm sorry, your name's Sean. Right. Yeah. Um, this is Melly Martinez's fault. Uh, come to find out he was undercover the whole time and a badass. I got to tell you that, Nathan, you're, you and your lies have made me doubt myself <laughs> yeah, so much. I, I don't even just, know how yeah, to go about this. But I will this. say, everybody's concern was the details. And just look at the difference in details of, like, story two and yeah. story one. All yeah. Is, yeah. Like, now story so one had a lot of details. Story two all was I just... I but sometimes inflated. liars put more details in. Yeah, it's though. got me so fucked up now that it d for, it seems insane to, to say the second one's true, but something is going, like, fuck it, that one's it. So that's you what, think that's the what lie is the do. wall of raccoons? Yeah, I think the like tree fort or whatever that I was called. I think tree that frog. it seemed easier to. <laughs> f I don't know, man. No, no, that tree frog detail is pretty, pretty stout detail. Like, tree to frog, because yeah, but... everybody's camp has kind of a name, you know. Yeah, yeah but, but tree he could just frog? know of a camp he partied at growing up. Well, well I, got, that's true. I don't know. Tree frog seems weird. Like you would say, frog house or frog or tree fort or frog house. I see. I believe tree frog. Tree you frog. do. <laughs> I, uh, I think yeah. the second one. Yeah, so who do you do you think the I second think the, story is true? No, I think the first one's true. You think I, the I first think, one's true? Yeah. Fuck. Specifically because of something he said. And what was that? It was when he was talking about how his cousin fought. Uh huh. That was where I was like that. Oh, that it was kind of action movie, like hold this guy here. Like he's got like standing in the middle, yeah, like but come on, we've all seen Jason Bourne movies. Yeah, but in, in real street fights, that's not how people fight. Mm. He's right, it's not how it goes down. I mean, yeah. There's, there's a lot of there's, <laughs> there's a lot of pulling online for the raccoon story. I'll just say that. They, it, people think, and I've, I've, I've seen I've seen a wall of raccoons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've seen, I've seen All that. Right. Where have you seen that? With he's from four Florida. Eyes. In, actually, I never saw it in Florida. I saw it in Washington. All right, a, wa a wall of raccoons. A wall like more raccoons than there should have been. Yeah. 
You know what I'm, like, I did just see that picture also. <laughs> Fuck it. Second can we, second can we just can we uh can we just remember that Nate also can't see shit? So yeah. he sees a wall <laughs> yeah. of raccoons. So if I saw a twenty it made, that was seventy. You know? Yeah. No um, <laughs> I don't know if that's what he meant. <laughs> it might have been Bigfoot too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe it was just They could a cat. have been children. <laughs> so uh, so Brett, you think that I'm um, refresh my memory of which one you thought was true? I think the uh camping uh wall of raccoon story is true. I want that to be true yes all right hey, I, I want the wall of raccoon story to be true and i, I think everybody else online is pretty much pulling for that most people say first is true richard uh melody martinez says first is a lie and she was right on the last one too so yeah what all does right, jessica uh, say jessica said that the um sean's first story is true that wall of raccoons but of course jessica would say that i mean she loves, she raccoons, loves raccoons and stuff actually yeah. i might change mine based on that mm. i yeah. say the first one's true the second one is a lie what do you say? You said what, Michael? I, I guess the second one's a lie. It's just too cool. I like it best. I want it to be real. Yeah, the whole like. Uh, if, it's, if the second one's real, we're writing a movie right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll be happy if it's real, but I guess I think that first one's real. Second story yeah, is a lie is my vote. Yeah, I think first one's true. God, now that I just screwed up so much on your story. <laughs> I mean, just the thought that New Orleans police officers have enough empathy for the person on the ground before trying to chase down other suspects, that just seems so... Hold on real quick. Leo, we get it. You missed Jessica, okay? We heard you on Twitter all day. Yeah, yeah. I know. We, we missed go, Jessica, okay. too. Yeah. Let me tell you, I gave her a rash of shit for not being here today. Trust yeah. me. Trust me. <laughs> we get it, okay? Yeah, yeah, I know. We're she's, all you got right now. She's our our son, and we rotate around her. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we dig Jessica so much. I'm going to say the second story is a fucking lie no i'm gonna oh god all right i'm gonna say the i'm gonna say the second story is a lie i hate to be with the group like that, i know I don't i'm gonna say that yeah so you think the first story is true i'm gonna say the first story no true. i don't know he did lie about the sister thing when he was like it was just my brother and then all of a sudden sisters were involved and then all of a sudden I can't tell you that he's, it's a service that's not the FBI. Melody said that Sean's going to end up changing his answer now just based on her calling him Wilford. Because <laughs> 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 she said he's sitting right. over here brooding trying to decide. Which I'm one gonna, is, I got to know. Yeah, which one is the it lie? Was, it was really crazy uh, the year afterwards where uh, my cousin and my brother and I ran into that dude who was bartending at a bar uh, in New Orleans called the Dragon's Den. Dude and he up. gave us drinks all night because the second one's true. No! What? Oh, oh my God. God. And I wanna, I'm and, melting. And, and I, I want to just, just throw this I, out I'm there. I'm pleased for I, the I, sake I, of a Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I got I to admit this right now, and it, you might be mad at me. I cheated a little <gasps> bit. Uh, they better that, not both no, be no, true stories. Okay. That is 100%. Okay. The second story is 100% true. I purposefully flub some of the details because it's so insane. Mm -hmm. Like, But all of it's true. I... Uh, 100%. Like, that's the kind of shit, like, if I could make that up, I would be a novelist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um wow. But, yeah, like, that was fucking insane. And every time I tell it, which I don't do often, it's probably only the fourth time I've ever told it, I get really, like, adrenaline-y. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it was so fucking insane, and yeah. it's hard to tell. Yeah. because Not hard, because it was like, oh, it's so traumatic, but just hard, because it was, like, so fast-moving, the details were so insane. And you're right about the fight. I, because I've talked to him about that. I was like, you were like fucking um, Jet Li. And he's like, no, I wasn't. You just can't fight. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to you, the fact that I wasn't on my ass looked amazing. Yeah. But when, yeah. When, yeah. like, because that's, that's all. When, when, like, real, if a person yeah. knows how to fight and they're yeah. fighting people that don't, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, ridiculous. The, yeah. The second, the second part is true. Uh, or the second story is true. Now, the, the first story. Is like it is not made up. It's just a, what we call in the South a mise en place of uh, three different stories. So, yeah. uh, in reality, everything up until the night is true. The guy did show up at the house, the tree frog, but alone with no gun, no raccoons. Weirder, uh, just some be more beer, and he just wanted to hang out. And we just kind of like all pretended to go to sleep till he left. It wasn't really, wow. yeah, it wasn't a very interesting story. However, the wall of raccoons, I have been raccoon hunting as a kid growing up in Louisiana, and that's what it looks like when you see them run. <laughs> so I have seen a wall of raccoons, but it was years so earlier. So was Nathan Hurst. Yeah, yeah. And what was the name of the word, uh, the, w that word you just said where it's a combination of three? Mise en place. Mise en place. Wow. Yeah, it's a, when you mash a couple of things together. But um, 
Yeah, the first one was, uh, yeah, it was a bunch of different stories mashed together. But wow. the second one is true. Yeah. Well, you guys, I'm just gonna say it. I think have been my favorite two liars. This has been good. This has been <laughs> You're really so full good. Of shit, the I both feel of so you. stupid. This is, I, like, I can't I believe how little I, can't I trust myself. I believe I fell for it. Brett fell for. For the second one, he didn't. He thought the raccoon thing was real. I died. Yeah, I totally. Uh, and did. Jessica, wow. Jessica Owen too for the first time, I think. <laughs> yeah. She usually at least gets one right. Yeah. So on this one. That, that story's real though. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was wow, insane. Good you should write that. It was insane. Thank you guys so much for coming by and sharing your dirty, filthy lies with us. We appreciate that, mm -hmm. and we appreciate that you took time. Where can people find you, and what do you have that you would like people to know about? Uh, I'm on Instagram at uh, Nathan Hurd, H U R D comedy, uh, and um, I have a private. Sh I post all my shows there, so just, okay. I have some shows this week, so just go there. Okay, wonderful. And how about you? I am at on Instagram at uh, at Mr. Sean Patton, just M R Sean Patton. Also, my website is me Sean Patton, M E Sean Patton. Um, all my tour dates are up. Just go see the tour dates. Uh. And I'm recording an album in September. Oh, sweet! I don't, kn I, I don't know if I can, I can say where, but I can't say the date yet. But anyway, it'll, it'll be up when I'm recording. And yeah, Edinburgh, just check me out on the, on the socials. Mm. Okay, wonderful. And uh, congratulations also to you, Nathan, for getting to Edinburgh. Oh, thank you. That's yeah, like man. always been seriously one of my fantasies is to always do a show there. And I had one that I did two years ago, and I was too much of a chicken to submit. And oh. it's really good to hear that. You guys are doing it and making it happen because it's such a mystery to us U.S. Uh, comedians about uh, the Edinburgh Festival, oh, which yeah, is one crazy. of the biggest ones in the world. So congratulations to both of you. And uh, thank you very much, Michael, for sitting in for Jessica. And yes, Jessica will be back on Friday. Yeah, sorry. She's been gone <laughs> so long. It's been <laughs> terrible. Thank you, Austin, for doing a great job doing on-air producing. Thank you to our engineer today, uh, Brett Erickson. You can follow him on Twitter at IBrettMyPants. Where can people follow <laughs> you? Uh, I know, best Twitter ever. <laughs> that's, that's how you that's do great. a Twitter. Best that's great. Twitter ever. Silly Twitter handle. Great. Oh, All that's right. amazing. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, I, don't, I don't tweet, dude. Dude, I don't well, really your tweet. Instagram. My your Instagram, Instagram is uh, High Five Michael H I G H F I V E Michael. Uh, check me out at the at the Sycamore Tavern on the twenty seventh and the Levity Live Oxnard on the twenty eighth. Oh fuck yeah! Oh, dude. I think I'm on that show with you. I think you are too. Yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome. And yeah. you, Austin, where can people follow you? I'm at the Austin Walker on everything, and please follow our Instagram, the Liars Club One, and our Twitter, Liars underscore Club. Please. Okay. Was Jessica on there? Like mention the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know, I know. And thank you all for having me. Yes. That's thank very you guys cool. for having me on. Oh, you're very, very hey, welcome. Hey, everybody online is really got singing you guys' praises. Yeah, so thanks for coming. Yeah, you there. guys have been great, great liars. You can follow me at Felicia Michaels all across the board. Do me a big favor. If you are into comedians, please go to Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. But I made a documentary called Pervs. It's it's out of the box is all I got to say. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so yeah, if you guys do have Amazon Prime, please go watch it and leave a sweet-ass review. I would appreciate that. That's really cool. And if you need yeah. the bootleg version, yeah. I can get that for about $5, $10. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you, or you can watch will it for you like the, will you like the doc, You directed it? And... I directed that's it. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, sick. with uh, Susanna Lee. A lot of people are in it. Joey Diaz, Felipe Esparza, awesome. Lori Kilmartin. Oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's a really wonderful project. Please also follow Jess Wellington, too, on Twitter and all across the board. You guys have been absolutely Absolutely fantastic. We will be back Friday going live around 8.30ish. Thank you guys so much for playing. We appreciate that you guys uh, always tune in on Mondays. And thank you for that. Have a wonderful Don't Monday. forget the thing. The what thing? Oh. You guys have been lied to. <laughs> <laughs> so reluctant.